And we are live. Thank God it is Friday. Although it's felt like Saturday uh, all day to me. I'm on Christmas break, on, on you know vacation uh, from Christmas Day all the way up to uh, January 1st. So today, run around doing stuff, whatever. It's felt like Saturday, even though it's Friday. So um, I want to say hello to everybody who is has been standing by and is part of the early bird crowd watching uh, or chatting in the chat. And then I'll talk a little bit about the whiskey that I'm uh, going to be enjoying tonight, whiskeys, and then we'll get into our topic. Um, so uh, da -da -da -dum. Christopher David, thank you very much for tuning in. Uh, Roslav Traps, thank you very much for tuning in. Tim Gargis, if that's how you pronounce it, is tuning in. Santa Cruz, and how you doing? If you ever get up to uh, Sacramento, uh, Santa Cruz, and let me know. Um, and come on by. I have to uh, uh, try a few whiskeys I got here. Kilco, thank you very much for uh, tuning in. And uh, Jeffrey Wack is tuning in. Tech187. Andrew Spurrell is tuning in. Thank you very much. And I'll continue to say hello to as others uh, tune in. Um, take a little sip of water. I've been sneezing like crazy, but it's I don't I feel I don't know fever, no sore throat, anything like that. I think it's just I turn the heater on because it's cold, right? And dust or whatever else gets blown around. Next thing you know, I'm sneezing, but I'm fine. Donner Pass whiskey. So Donner Pass whiskey. Do you actually live near Donner Pass? Because Donner Pass is about an hour and a half, give or take, from where I'm at. Alrighty. So tonight. Uh, so. January through March, I'm going to be doing a Texas whiskey marathon for three months because uh, I brought back so many whiskeys from Texas, some from the distillery, from a, some from a local whiskey shop in Texas. Um, so I'm sort of, uh, the last couple of weeks, have been sort of get, trying to get past the neck pour on all of them so that when I start doing my reviews in, in January, coming up another week, uh, I've already gotten past the shoulders and got them open up a little bit. Um, I'm going to have Spencer Whalen from the uh, Texas Whiskey Association on. Uh, probably we'll re pre-record and then I'll post a premiere to get an update on the status of the Texas Whiskey Association and the Texas Whiskey Trail and, and so forth. So really, really looking forward to that. I'll be sending out emails to other distilleries to see if I can bring them on as guests. Um, all righty. So this is... This is a Balcona's Hechiceros. Hechiceros. Um, this is one you can get at the distillery and you can get at, say, like Total Wine and More in Texas and other whiskey shops. I have not seen this outside of Texas. Uh, I've seen a lot, like five or six of their other bottles outside of Texas, but I've not seen that one. And then the next one will be the Brujeria. Brujeria. I'll get into that one next. So... The Hechiceros is began with whiskey made from 100% Golden Promise. That's a strain of barley, uh, malted barley, and finished in port casks. Um, I don't know if it's a port cask, like a cask from Portugal, or a local winery. I'll have to, I'll have to ask, see if I can get hold of Jared or someone at the distillery. Uh, some, like uh, Garrison Brothers, they have a bottle... Uh, the Estacado is finished in a port cask, but it's a port style wine from a Texas winery. So I don't know if they're using a cask from a local winery or what. I kind of have to look into that and find out. It is, um, so this was on their 10th anniversary. They put out some special bottles, and this is one of them. This is bottled at 61.5% alcohol by volume, and this is the neck pour from this. But I have tasted this before when I was visiting um, in April 2019 when I was visiting uh, Crowded Barrel and did a video with Daniel and Rex. And then um, Daniel and I did a couple of videos together for my channel. Uh, this is what we're tasting. And I really, really, really wanted to get one. So on my September trip, when I went back there, I was uh, really, really looking forward to it. Man. So... The last time I went live, I had Dustin Silv, Silva, or D-H-2 Silva, however he puts his name on there. 
And he said he wasn't really impressed with Texas whiskeys. He was kind of giving the thumbs down and yada, yada, yada. I can say, Dustin, if you're watching this or you tune in later, or you watch this on the replay, dude, you got to try this one. This is one. Now, he did say he thought Texas should stick to uh, single malts, that he's not been impressed with Texas bourbons. So, anyway, everybody got their opinions. Everybody has a right to be wrong. So, uh, Ed for Og. That's an interesting name. Ed Fra Ed for Og. Thank you much for uh, tuning in. <sighs> Take a sniff. Sniff. Wow. It's hot. It's tasty, but it's hot. It could probably use a drop of water. Um, George Kaplan, thank you much for tuning in. Haven't seen you in a while. Um, how, how are you and Amy doing? He says, wait, is this a drinking night? What am I, who am I kidding? Absolutely. I'm going to get a spoon real quick. I want to I be able to put a drop of water in here because that is a wee bit on the hot side. I'll take a couple more sips, but it's a little on the hot side. It, I mean, that's some serious ABV. Um, so it's unchill filtered. Uh, no added coloring. All right. So the topic for tonight is, and I know, Gregor, thank you much for tuning in. And I know um, this can be so much of a uh, somewhat of a uh, touchy topic. I know this is a topic that a lot of my fellow whisker tubers won't touch it with a ten foot pole. And some might gonna sort of go overboard into the pure negatives, and I'm not up with that either. Um, so which is the pros and cons of um whiskey ambassadors and representatives basically the same thing. Not I'm calling themselves ambassadors, sometimes they're called just calling them a rep. I'm gonna take another sip and then I'm gonna put a drop of water in it. Mm. First thing I want to say is. People who work in the hospitality industry, are we talking about sommeliers, waiters, people who work at whiskey shops, people who work at uh, uh, wineries, you know, the, the servers, um, really dedicated people, hardworking people, and they don't get paid jack diddly. Let's, 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 get, let's get honest about that. They don't get paid a whole lot. People go into the business because they love wine or they love whiskey. This is what they have a passion for, and so they get into this. And there's also a sort of a lifestyle kind of go, uh, goes along with it. But I spent six months working uh, as a psalm uh, in San Francisco, and it was hard work, and there was a lot of uh, bullshit um, that I would I, I, after six months, I'm like, I'm not putting up with this crap. Um, sometimes management can be real bent they holes. So... Um, there, I made some notes here. Um, so they tend to be low-paying jobs. People tend to be hardworking. And you, there's a lot of really good ones, a lot of really good ones who are really, 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 really knowledgeable. Not just, say, about the particular brand that they represent, but about wine, knowledge about wine or whiskey uh, in general. A lot of them have certifications, particularly, say, in the wine. Uh, there might be a certified sommelier. They might have certifications from the Wine Spirit Educational Trust. Uh, and a lot of them have really put a lot of time in, into uh, honing their craft. Uh, I would say, generally speaking, I'm, I tend to be impressed with their vocal ability, the friendliness, the energy, the enthusiasm uh, that they put uh, into it. Okay, so I want to st start from there. So if there's any reps watching later on, um, I, I want to start with that. Two... I just want to say is everything I'm going to be saying right now is going to be generalizations based on my experience. By the way, <coughs> if there's anybody here who, after I sort of lay out what I have to say on the topic, would like to respond, um, I can send put up a link and you could join me and give me your two cents on it. But let me lay out my spiel and then hear what you guys have to say. I would be mostly interested in their observers and what you how you perceive things as an observer and watching say youtube channels or going to whiskey events or you as a whiskey tuber if you've had um reps and ambassadors in your program so one of the things 
that has become apparent is, uh, generally speaking, uh, distilleries or a conglomerate, particularly the bigger they are, the more regimented they tend to be, is they prescribe a script that their representatives are going to follow. Um, there's a shop in um, Mountain View, California, down near Silicon Valley, uh, called um, uh, the Wine Depot, and I've met, I've met some whiskey reps there, and I talked to one of them, and I wanted to him to br bring him on, invite him, or if he knew anybody else, onto uh, my channel, and have him on. And the guy, one particular guy I talked to, he was from Scotland, so he had the accent, but uh, he was living here in California, and he said that he was actually a manager and oversees whiskey reps. And he said they were reluctant to have people come on to a YouTube channel because someone, one of the reps, had sort of deep, this is his words. These are his words. I'm not making this. These are his words. He says they deviated from the script and got in trouble. So they're reluctant to come on YouTube. And I'm kind of like, okay, I get it. It's a big company, big, 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 big conglomerate company that owns multiple distilleries and, and wineries. That's how big, that was a big, comp, big, big company. So I, I understand that. I wasn't going to pressure them. I just make an invitation. But it gave me, that comment sort of gave me an insight as I uh, began to observe um, whiskey reps at whiskey shows, at when they're doing a little tastings, at a uh, like a whiskey shop or on YouTube. Um, Gregor says there's zero wrong with ambassadors as long as all is kept transparent. They are a needed part of the industry. Dominic Urban, thank you very much for tuning in. He says, I second that. I see this topic coming a lot lately, but to my knowledge, only one whiskey tuber is really close to them and was always very transparent about it, to my knowledge. Well, I'm glad you had. Thank you for voicing that opinion of you. Tune in. Keep following. Keep following, following on in this. Are they following a script that must be followed regardless of the context? Regardless of the context. That's sort of one of the key issues here. Um, if you're at a whiskey show, right? If it, 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 Say yes or no. Everybody's in the chat. Say yes or no if you've ever been to a whiskey show. Whiskey Fest. Uh, whiskeys of the world, or maybe some other whiskey, or you have a lot of tables, representatives, you got the banners, and you got the, they're doing pourings, and there's a lot of people kind of milling around. Let me know, hey, have you guys ever been to a whiskey show, but yes or no? Uh, Kilko says, yes, it was very loud. Tom R., thank you much for turning in. He says, yes. Roslov says, yes. Uh, whiskey Sipper, no. Santa Cruz, and no. Gregor, sadly, no. Donald Rance, yes. Uh, George Kaplan, yes. So the context, Jesse uh, Voison, thank you much for turning. He says yes. So the context is it's usually like they might have several big rooms or just one big, huge room. And they're like these lines of tables. And the reps come in, they set up their tables and they have their glasses out. Or maybe you get <coughs> when you first show up because you bought a ticket, you get like a little sampler glass. Sometimes they have those little Things you can kind of hang it around your neck, which is kind of cool. Um, but they have these big banners. Some I've seen where they actually have videos, and they're showing you what the distillery looks like, that kind of a thing. It's, you know, playing on a, on a little screen there, you know. And so I've been to Whiskey Fest a couple of times in San Francisco and San Jose and Whiskeys of the World in San Francisco and San Jose. Standard, they're here at a table. There's a lot of people coming in. Keep in mind the context and the and – the, Social context is really what I want to get. The social context is people come up. Hi, I would like to, you know, they've got the little glass that they've got. Um, I'm sure I've got someone around here. Uh, you know, those teeny weeny glasses that they give you. I know I've got one around here somewhere. Uh, hold on just a second. Uh, da, 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 da. Uh, there we go. Whiskey Fest. This is uh, Whiskey Fest, San Francisco. Uh, if you can see that whiskey vest, San Francisco. So you got your Glen Cairn. I would like to try your whatever whiskey, and then they pour you a little sample, and you smell it and you taste it. And then people, blah, blah, blah. 
it does, as Kyoko said, it is, does tend to be very, very loud, right? So people are talking really loud. And sometimes there's a band uh, at uh, Whiskey Fest in San Francisco. They often have a band at one end. They actually have it on a, on like a yacht. Um, uh, that, and, there's, and they have food on another floor. They have food, which is always good. Um, and so people, yeah, I like to try this too. People sniff, they taste, whatever. They might have some pamphlets or something you can take home, you know, some informational stuff. But people just, bam, 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 and then they move on. They might ask some questions, but in that context, all you're doing is this is our 12 year old, this is our 15 year old, this is our not, this is our P did, this is our, our, our whatever it is, our porn. You just, it's just sort of telling about what they're tasting in particular and sort of short questions. It's not an in depth dialogue that you're going to talk to for an hour. Kilco says, the only part I enjoyed was when I walked away from the hustle and bustle and attended two whiskey tastings in the room next door. Right. So when I, when I went to the one, last time I went to one in San Francisco, Dr. Don Livermore um, from Canada uh, was there. And I got to sit in on a, a lecture with him and we tasted six whiskeys, including uh, the Lot 40 cast strength, which was awesome. And I really, really liked that. Anyway, the context is it's short question, answer, short conversation. It's, Boom, and it's, nothing's being recorded. So if you did go and go off script, who's gonna know, right? That's the context. If you go to, take another sip, because I'm getting a little parched. Wow. Wow, that's quite a bite. So it's really, really rich. Fig, dates, prunes, raisins, caramels. There's almost like a, um, maple syrup character to it it's a little on the sweeter side um really 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 nice but there's like some toffee notes i'm gonna give it a little bit of water the other context you tend to see um in some states it's not legal to do that some places it is some places it isn't you might go to i'm actually gonna put two in there i don't think i'm gonna drown this puppy i think it's got plenty of alcohol to back it up <coughs> Um, some states don't allow it. Some places do. And they might have like one or two bottles and you get these little plastic thimbles, kind of a thing like that. And you get a little teeny thing. Blah, blah, blah. And it's pretty much similar to being at a whiskey show with the exception of it's not as loud, not as, not as crowded um, and so forth. And at the whiskey shows like Whiskey Fest, Whiskeys of the World, they can't sell you anything. It's just informational. They're not selling whiskey at the Whiskey Festival, Whiskey of the World. But when you're going to a, a whiskey shop and they're doing a tasting, there's a little bit more of a push, an incentive to say, hey, we want to make a sale. And sometimes, and I've seen, they might have like a coupon. Hey, while the rep is here, if you buy a bottle, you get 25% off, whatever. Or the tasting fee that you paid to do the tasting there, you get that discount or whatever there's a little bit more of a push but still the context it's not a long dialogue talk show type of format right now here's the third context youtube or whiskey tube as we like to call it right typically at least an hour long right could be an hour and a half could be two hours depending I, I, don't, I don't think I've seen a rep come on for less than half an hour. The context is you've got a channel with the host or hosts, if you have more than one person there. And then you, there's a chat with all you guys. And this is not a sales pitch, strictly speaking, and a short, hey, let's make a sale kind of thing. Nor is it a big crowded event where people are going from table to table, table to table, table to table, table to table. table, table. And tasting 15, 20, I don't know how many, you know, how many you can you can taste and still remain standing at the whiskey event, right? This is a rep for either several different sister distilleries or just one particular distillery. And so they have give they have all the focus, they have an hour long, they have a, a fixed audience because the host for the channel is there, 
you know? Though, uh, I haven't polled or asked any of my fellow whiskey tours as to why they bring on reps. One, sometimes if you have a whiskey rep on your uh, on your channel, you might get some free whiskeys. That's bonus. Nothing wrong with that. Um, it adds another layer of information and content to your channel. Nothing wrong with that. That's bonus. That's cool. Um, you're making personal connections with people in the industry. That That's cool. Reps or ambassadors, what do you want to call them? <coughs> they are whiskey peeps. They are our, our kind of people. Oof, total cool with that. Awesome. Right? These are all pluses. This is all good. Now, you know there's going to be a but, right? Before you say anything, a critique, you got you to gotta say some good stuff because then you just piss people off, right? I really like your hat. I really like your dress. But, you know, <laughs> you know, you can kind of feel the butt coming, right? Right? So what I have observed are two completely different types of whiskey reps on, on YouTube channels. Um, and there's an easy way to sniff them out. Emily Chambers, thank you very much for tuning in. Um, Emily <clears throat> says, I don't mind the sales pitch if it's honest, i.e. I'm talking about X on their behalf. I work with consultant with X. True, but hang in there. <coughs> I like big bucks and I cannot lie. Kill co. Okay, there you go. Oh, there you go. Gotcha. But I was watching one particular channel, and they had I'm gonna I'm not gonna say who it is, and they had a rep on, and you could not get a word in edgewise with this rep. They had a speech written, and they were just like. Now, this person was super knowledgeable. They weren't reading anything. They're off the top of my head. Uh, they knew their job. They knew the whiskeys. They knew the history. They were enthusiastic. They had great energy. They were well-spoken. They were polished. They were professional. Thumbs up on all that. But I felt like I was watching an infomercial. You ever, like in the middle of the night, 2 or 3 o'clock in the morning, there's like a half hour long show on a vacuum cleaner. And for a half an hour, they're just, they, they may act like it's a, they act like it's a talk show. You know, they try to format as if it's a talk show, but it's just an infomercial to sell a vacuum cleaner or a hair products or a weight loss program or whatever the hell it is. Right. That's exactly what it was. The host could hardly get a word in edgewise. They were not answering questions or interacting with the group. Yeah, it's just an enthusiastic sales pitch. And the problem is what this, and I've seen this bunches of times, and the rep was essentially doing what they might do at a whiskey show, like Whiskey Fest, or if they're giving a presentation at a whiskey shop, and they really weren't reading the audience and queuing into the context in which they're in. When you come on to a whiskey tube channel, they should think of it. And if there are any whiskey reps watch this, and I know you might be handcuffed as to what you can do, you know, the boss tells you what you can do, and that's all you can do. Think of it more like watch watch talk shows in which they bring on an actor who's gonna talk about his latest movie, right? Um, Jimmy Kimmel or Jimmy Fallon or whatever else, right? They bring on an actor. They might show a clip from the movie. But other than that, they're not there just to push the movie. They talk. They dialogue. They have conversations at, at, all, over the, all over the map, not just pushing the movie or the book or whatever else they got, or the record. Maybe they have musicians coming on. Uh, Roslav says, this is why I don't like an advent calendar. I, I, I don't get it. Yeah, I don't understand. Yeah, I explain that a little bit. Uh, JG says, uh, liking the beard looks great. I like the look of it. I don't like the feel of it. Uh, Santa Cruz says, robot reps. Yeah, kind of. 
some of the best people that I've seen, in terms of actors on talk shows, who will talk about their movie or whatever else, but also be just really entertaining and engaging, Arnold Schwarzenegger, I, I always thought he was great. And even actors that, things that I don't particularly care about them in terms of their politics or whatever, uh, I find them really engaging. Um, uh, the guy plays Rob Stark on uh, uh, an Iron Man. His name just slips on mine. Uh, um, Robert Downey Jr. Robert Downey Jr. Robert Downey Jr. is an awesome guest when he's on a talk show. Whiskey reps should try to change their approach, in my opinion, to be much more like them. Yes, you're here to talk about your brand, but be conversational. Interact with the chat. See, notice how I'm interacting with the chat. I'm not, not just giving you a speech. I'm actually reading comments. Now, that's all. That's because I, if I had 400 people in the chat, that'd be a lot difficult. You know, uh, I like having a small chat room because I can be more interactive with it. But they completely ignore the context. And one time I was watching one particular channel, and they had this rep on. And, I, and the rep that was on there, this rep was fantastic, great vocals, great everything. And I've been to the distillery that this person was representing. Great distillery, like the whiskeys, no problem there. Um, but no one was going to get a, a word in edgewise. And I actually, with I was in the chat. I actually started texting someone else in the chat, and we started having a conversation. You know, having a chat about what was going on the YouTube channel, and I said. I, I, basically, I, I basically said, so what do you think about this? And I'm chatting, I'm texting. And this person responded, I'm leaving names out. I don't think this person's ever going to shut up. I don't think anybody's ever going to get a word in edgewise. I'm paraphrasing. This is not exact terms. Um, they're just on a roll. And when they have finished their script, that's the end of the show. Uh, Gregory says, the difference is passion, Eric. Those that cannot understand what they are getting into in, on the community or what they can get out of it being on the whiskey tube or I'm really doing a job. Next. Right. Uh, Kilko says, Robin Down is a wonderful person. It shows in his work, being genuine and open easily for famous people, and he's just having a good time whatever he goes. Exactly. Um, Dram Bam, thank you much. Bleh. Dram Bam, thank you much. He's, Eric, your words are so true. It's far from everyone, but nonetheless, it does exist. Go ahead. Thank you very much for tuning in. Uh, it might have been. I don't remember. I could be wrong. I think I'm gonna. I think it would go abs. It might have been you and I talking, but I, I'm. I'm. My memory. I don't remember. It might have been go abs. Actually, if, I, I'm gonna spill the beans. I wouldn't. I wouldn't, wouldn't plan on mentioning you, but I think it was me and you talking. Um, uh, ben, Demon Hunter. Thank you much for tuning in. So. Um, uh, so Okay, so now there are some exceptions. There are some exceptions to this. I'm going to say this. Everybody, most, if you guys, okay, well, it was me and you and go Habs. Okay, now don't, don't mention the show and don't mention the rep because I will delete it. Don't, don't do it. There are some exceptions to this. Um, and people, I have not had them on my show, but would love to. Ben Dietrich, if you guys know who Ben Dietrich is, type in there who he works for. Ben Dietrich. Just type in there who he works for. If you guys remember, know who Ben Dietrich is, just type it in there. Right. Gregor says SMW, Scotch Malt Whiskey Society. Absolutely. Right. Right. Ben Dietrich is the polar opposite of everything I just described. If I had a distillery, I would want Ben to work for me. Um, and if Ben watches this, I'm not just buttering your bread, bro. I'm just buttering your, buttering your bread, bro. He is awesome. He is awesome. And I think not the, and I think it's for several reasons. One, yes, he represents an, an awesome uh, whiskey club. But he was talking about whiskey publicly before he got into working for SMWS. He, by the way, he was recently on uh, Ear Whiskey. Great one hour. If you guys haven't checked out Ear Whiskey, check out Ear Whiskey. 
<coughs> Ben Dietrich was recently on there, and you'll see exactly what I'm talking about. Ben freely talks about if you ask Ben, so when you're not drinking S. Scotch Malt Whiskey Society, what I was drinking, he he doesn't he doesn't oh crud. I might have to mention another company. Uh, oh yeah, I was enjoying, you know, something from Isla the other day. I was enjoying this the other day. Da, 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 da. He'll try to mention other whiskeys. He was, and he can't pretend he doesn't drink other whiskeys. Be one, because he was already talking about them before he was at Scotch Malt Whiskey Society. Um, but this is this is a flag. Watch this, watch this. When you're watching whiskey reps on other channels. And someone asked, okay, I'm, I'm going to make it Glenn, um, Glenn Schmuckatelli, okay? The fictional distiller, Glenn Schmuckatelli. So you got a rep on there from Glenn Schmuckatelli. <laughs> it's a Highland distillery, Glenn Schmuckatelli. So he got, hey, Dustin, how you doing? Um, so you got, you got a rep there from Glenn Schmuckatelli. And when you ask this rep from Glenn Schmuckatelli, so when you're not drinking a whiskey from Glenn Schmuckatelli, what are you drinking? And you can almost see like they freeze for a second. And they're like, oh, crap, what am I going to say? I'm not allowed to mention another competing distillery. Or you'll see them mention another distillery, but it's one that's owned by the same parent company. Or they go, oh, yeah, when I'm not drinking Glenn Schmuckatelli whiskeys, I'm usually having a beer. Um. That's total bullshit. That is a bullshit move. That is a bullshit move. Because you weren't asked about whether you like to drink wine or beer or Pepsi or Coca-Cola. You were asked as to whether or not you drink other whiskeys, and if so, what it is. Not that we, we don't give a shit about what other whiskeys you drink. We don't. So why do we ask the question? We ask the question because we want to see if you're a bullshitter. If you're just there to give a sales pitch, that's why we ask. Because an honest person will say, well, sometimes I'm in the mood for peated whiskey, so I'll have, you know, Lafroig, or I'm, I'm a big Lagavulin fan. Or sometimes, you know, you know, the other day I was in the mood for bourbon, so I had an old Forester or whatever. You know, lately I've been kind of getting into some Japanese whiskey. You know, they will be honest. But if they, but it may be either because they feel bad, like oh crap, I can't, I don't want to sound like I'm representing another company, another competitor, so I can't mention them. Therefore, oh no, I gotta dodge the question. But watch, they, so many of them dodge the question, and what they don't realize is by not being honest and mentioning what other brands they would like to drink. They're doing two things. One, they think, oh no, they think they're trying to be loyal to their brand by not mentioning others, and they're they're not. They come across as dishonest, disingenuous, and not really a real whiskey drinker. All right? How many of you only drink one brand? If you drink one brand, let me know what that one brand is, and that's all you ever drink. Nobody who enjoys whiskey just drinks one brand. Nobody who enjoys wine just drinks one wine, right? We might have our favorites. We There may even be one that we work for. Dram Bam, thank you, ma'am, says a Ferrari salesman never drives a Lamborghini. But you know what? If the car company doesn't produce pickup trucks and they need a pickup truck for picking up parts, they will own a Toyota or a Ford or something like that. So they do. There are car dealerships that own pickup trucks from another company, another brand because their brand doesn't make a Ferrari doesn't produce pickup trucks. So if you need a pickup truck to go pick up parts or do something, you're going to buy a Mercedes pickup truck, whatever pickup truck you got. All right. So they do own uh, other vehicles. So now on the other hand, I put some water in it. I'm going to give no sip. much more calm down still got quite a bunch but it's much more calm down <clears throat> lost track of my thought that happens when you get older um 
if they admitted that they drink other whiskeys, they would come across as more sincere and honest, and then were much more likely to believe them when they say, well, the 15-year-old is my favorite, or the double cask is my favorite, or whatever else they have in their brand's profile that they're talking about. We're much more likely to believe them on that if they admit that they drink other brands of whiskeys or if they're talking about wine. Now, here's the other thing. The other reason why it's dishonest is not only do whiskey drinkers not just drink one brand, even if you work for a brand, to be educated and knowledgeable about the trade in general, you need to have a profile and a nose and a palate and an awareness of the industry at large. Even So if, if, you're, if you work for a Scottish distillery, you need to be familiar with American whiskeys. If you work for an American distillery, you need to be familiar with Scottish distilleries or Irish or whatever else. In the wine world, I have never, I've seen multiple times winemakers talk about other wineries all the time. They talk about their neighbors and representatives from wineries. So typically, if you produce, let's say, Cabernet Sauvignon, Merlot, Malbec, these Bordeaux varietals, your parallel to your winery is in France, right? If you're producing Syrah, Mouved, Viognier, then your parallel is in the Rhone Valley, right? When you watch videos of wine producers in Australia, say Penfolds, for example, straight up they talk about Bordeaux, right? But they talk about Bordeaux. When you watch winery videos of, of bodegas in Spain, they talk about France, right? It's a completely different mentality. And, and I've seen photos of very well-known high-end uh, California wine producers, and they're drinking Burgundy. They're drinking Bordeaux, right? Because they have to understand their own winemaking in a global context with their parallels on the other side of the world and where they are at. You know, it, you gotta have a broader knowledge base. So any, any whiskey rep that is reluctant to talk about it, the other distilleries, first of all, I'm gonna cut them a break. I'm gonna cut the break. You know what? They're doing it because they want to. They're doing that because they have to. They've been told. Don't mention other companies. You know what? I'm sympathetic. They're working hard. They're trying to do their job. They're trying to not get fired. They got a paycheck. They got bills to pay. So I'm totally sympathetic with those who are forced to follow a script. What I have a problem with is not the rep. It's the people, the management that they're working for. Those are the ones I have a problem with. Those are the ones I have a problem with. And so, um, Taking a sip. Ah, this is freaking awesome! Really, really delicious. Um, lost my train of thought again. It happens when you get older. Um. One thing I'm going to say about the Texas distilleries, since I'm drinking Texas distillery, for the most part, with one exception, one exception, I won't say who it is. If you can guess it, I'll, I'll, uh, if you can guess who it is, I'll let you know. Um, but I won't tell, I'll tell you. When you, when you, I, I have never ever seen, if Rob, I've never ever seen that I can think of Robert Licorice of uh, Iron Root Distillery talk about, whiskeys their whiskeys dustin you got it right <laughs> dustin got it he knows i've never seen i never i don't think i've ever seen robert at some point not talk about balconas um i've heard balconas talk about uh iron root and other texas distilleries. generally speaking most of the texas distilleries have no problem mentioning and referring to other Texas distilleries because they have much more of a philosophy of, on the one hand, they're kind of competing, right? There's a competitive spirit. These are, these are competitive people 
on the other hand, you know, it's that phrase, you know, a rising tide raises all ships. By promoting Texas whiskey in, in a whole, including their fellow distilleries and getting the reputation of Texas whiskey as a whole up, then all of them prove. And the Napa Valley, uh, the rising tide lifts all ships, right? Um, and the Napa Valley very much has that attitude because if you're coming to the Napa Valley, which is the number one tourist destination in California, and you're visiting our distillery, well, you're probably also going to visit another, excuse me, a winery. There is one distillery in Napa Valley, but that's not what I'm talking about. If you're visiting our winery, you're going to visit another winery, and you're another, another, another winery, another winery. And so you want to promote the entire Napa Valley as a destination so people will come and taste and buy your wines. And you want them to visit a whole bunch of them and spend the weekend there, spend a week there, and spend lots of money. And that, that's really what it's all about. Also, there's also a symbiotic relationship because if a pestilence gets into your vineyards, it's not going to stay in your vineyards. It's going to come in the next vineyards, next vineyards. So they want to all work together to sort of keep the vineyards of the entire Napa Valley healthy, right? And when there's fires and stuff like that, they all jump in and pitch in with each other. So one thing I don't do, and I know... Again, I won't mention any names. This one, I won't mention names. I know of one person that when they see this scripted rep on a YouTube channel and they see it going on, they'll either tune out and not watch because they're like, oh, crap. Here's those reps. And I, you know, I'm, I totally get that. I totally get that. Or they will purposely start, I don't call it spamming or whatever. Start asking hard questions that they know this whiskey rep is not going to want to answer and they're going to dodge. And then they just get pissed off and they're like, I don't want to have, I don't want, I, I don't want to have anything to do with reps because this is how they typically are. You know what? Cut. I also want to cut. Uh, Will Charles says, uh, Jared at Balconis talks about all whiskey, super cool, and music and other things as well, you know. Um, just like food and whatever else, they tend to talk about a lot of things. Um, so that's uh, I've been at this for 42 minutes, so this has been my 42 minute uh, rant on the pros and cons of whiskey reps. Cut them some slack because they're hardworking, um, they're underpaid. They're doing a job I would like to do, but I'm not taking the pay cut. Let's get real, right? They're in one sense, living the life we'd like to live, living in the in, working in the whiskey world. That'd be awesome, right? Um, oftentimes, if you're going to get a job, it might be for a distillery that's owned by a big conglomerate, and they're going to be very dictatorial, just in the way in which they have a scripted. Um, um, branding and merchandising and commercialization and all that crap. They have that tight control and all that stuff and push an image. They're about pushing a particular image. Well, now they can do the commercials and the labels and all the rest of that crap, but, but that pushing an image is going to carry over into uh, the whiskey rep and they're going to be there just to be a mouthpiece, uh, not be themselves, you know, John, Fred, Mary, whatever, not be themselves talking about whiskey, but be the, the puppet. That's a, man, that's probably the best way to put it. They're just going to be there to be a puppet for the brand. And that's unfortunate. I would not want to work in a position where I couldn't be me talking and using my own passion and love for whiskey to talk about a brand. Um, if they, if, but the problem is there may be more distilleries that have tight strings, you know, constraints on their reps than those that don't. And so one of the things I've really, really enjoyed about Ben Dietrich um, is he, he's it's real. He's just a real, real dude talking about real whiskeys. And he does them a, a huge uh, uh, justice. He really represents them well. And he's much more a part of the community. Now, <coughs> I, I mean, I love the licorice family. Robert Licorice, who's, um, he works in the distillery, but he's also sort of like the rep. 
and now the Galladay's as well, working as reps. Um, so probably we'll have the Galladay's on. Speaking of reps, we'll probably have the Galladay's on uh, during Texas month. I have, I think I've sent Josh a text and say, hey, I'd like to have you on. He said, sure, whatever. But I haven't scheduled anything yet. So I'll probably have them on uh, to talk about uh, Iron Root as well as maybe Robert. We'll see how it <coughs> yeah, excuse me, see how it goes and talk about they have a channel called Texas Whiskey Life and so forth. So, all righty. Um, ba -ba -da -da -bum. All right. I'm going to Welsh Taro or anybody else, if you'd like to, I'm going to put the invite in the chat. If you would like to come on and give me your two cents, you can do that. There you go. So if you have a, I'll give you a minute. If you would like to come on, uh, there is the link. Give me your two cents on the topic. If you're watching this on the replay, uh, I would be more than welcome your comments. You know, I think the fair thing to do, this is my part of my philosophy of all of life. There are pros and cons to everything. There are pros and cons to everything. Um, and to be fair and just to an individual, to a company, to a group of people, to anybody else, look at the pros and look at the cons, the strengths and the weaknesses. Um, we've all got them. So be fair to them and don't just be total, you know, negative, but also, you know, don't, um, Pretend like everything's just peachy keen, fine, and nothing's ever wrong either. I think there's a balance there. You can just kind of. Um, all right. Mr. K, we got Mr. K coming on, who I recently had on. Uh, I think it was Christmas Eve. How you doing, man? Tired as always, but otherwise, all right. He's a little dark where you're at. It is. It's uh, East Coast time here. No, I don't mean nighttime. It's nighttime here, too. I mean the room you're in. Oh, yeah, I only have one light on this time instead so, of uh, others. All right, so you got two cents on the topic? Uh, mostly just that I can understand the position that they're in with that kind of job since because of what my brother does as a uh, rep kind of person, at least in the Rhode Island area. So it's it's interesting that we were talking about it because it's been something that's on, been on my mind kind of in the back of my head because of the difficult work he has to do. You don't have to tell me the company, but what's the product or whatever your brother uh, represents? Uh, that's not, they don't do product. It's like a distributor kind of thing. I think okay. The, I'm going to say the wrong one first because I always do. No, wait. Is it WB Mason or MS Walker? I don't know. I don't remember which I don't, one. Whatever. It didn't matter. I was just kind of curious. I didn't know if he was, yeah, like, if he's doing a beverage or he's doing car parts or he's doing, you know, lawn oh, alcohol. Oh, okay, okay. Good. Okay. There you go. Then it fits. Okay. I mean, yeah. there's reps for other products, you know, hair care or whatever, all nail polish or. Whatever. Oh, I know, I know. <laughs> I've seen those. I, I, you know, I think about getting a job as a as a, as a, a hair care product rep. What do you think? I think you'd have a, an interesting time with that job. <laughs> <laughs> it could be fun. <coughs> anyway, so you were saying. Uh, well, I've had that in the back of my head, and I hope to have them on my own channel at some point simply because it's it's interesting to get my perspective as just a guy who likes whiskey and does this thing on YouTube, and right. him who is – he's studied to be a wine psalm. He's doing actual distribution, and okay, uh, he has a background in theatrics and stuff. So he's kind of genuine, but whenever I hear him talking to someone he's trying to sell to, it's almost like the tone of his voice changes slightly, and mm -hmm. it goes from my brother's voice to sales pitch man voice. <laughs> And I don't, I can't do anything about it because, you know, it's his job. It's, it's what he wants right. to do. It's his approach, but it's always something that's been like, oh, man, just talk to him like a person. Stop. <laughs> well, so, so, um, so when I do my videos, um, it's, it's something about the dynamic of the camera and the mic and the format. I, it, you know, if we're sitting, if you and I are sitting at a restaurant you know, we're eating. Yeah, yeah. So the other day, yeah, I was going and I was going to go. I was going to go fishing, and um, so I had. You know, you would talk in a normal tone of voice. You know, you pick up your wine, and, 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 and you know, oh, so how was your day? Da, 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 da. That's a normal conversational voice. When you are going to do video, 
you have to be almost as if you're on stage and project more um, to come across as enthusiastic, um, as excited about your topic so that your viewers also get excited. You have to be a little bit more animated. And so if you're sitting in the camera, hello, my name is Eric. And today I'm going to be reviewing the McAllen 12 year old Highland. Thing. I mean, nobody's going to freaking watch that. You, and even though, even if that's your normal tone of voice, you have to kind of, uh, welcome to another episode of Eric Wade Whiskey Studies, and in this video, I'm going to be reviewing the McAllen 12 year I don't talk like that. No, it's the joys of theatrics. Uh, yeah. that's, the, that's kind of the only thing I have is my background. Is I, don't, I, I don't normally, I'm, I'm an enthusiastic, energetic, hyper guy, but I don't normally talk, I would be dead tired within the, you know, but, you know, a couple of hours, I'd be dropping if I talk like that all the time. Just it's, thinking about that is making me tired. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Hi, everyone. How are we doing today? It's good to have you on the show. It's like, oh, uh, yeah. Uh, <laughs> so, um, so if you listen to, to radio talk show hosts, those who are, regardless of the topic or whether you agree with them or not, on anything, just pay attention to the vocals. Those who are really successful have a particular pattern and repetition and way that they speak and present. And so, I mean, I took took speech classes in college. Um, took what's called homiletics um, uh, in seminary. I've you know I've done a lot of public speaking. I've I've done teaching both in college and high school level. Um, and so there is sort of a you, like you flip a switch and you kind of go into this mode. Yeah. Um, when you do it, and so sometimes if you're a rep, sometimes you might have to do that as well. And when you're giving a presentation. Because you don't want to put people to sleep, you want to be engaging, and you want to capture people's attention. Uh, yeah, like I don't know. I'm not Jason. I'm not Jason or uh, Mash and Drum. Jason talks with his hands all the time because he's Italian. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> you know, I, I'm sure he talks with his hands. I only do this to be animated in front of the camera. I don't normally wave my hands around that much. <laughs> no, I, I definitely do more um, hand theatrics and 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 speech things, and you start to engage with the audience, and you speak more with your hands. And, I, I don't do that automatically either. I'm very kind of like, like, like this, this is not my normal speaking voice. This is my normal speaking voice. Right. If right. I talk like this all the time, you're going to go to sleep. But since I'm engaging with someone on the camera and we are uh, broadcasting, I know um, right. to have, to have my kind of like theater voice on, I have to turn it up right. a little, right. uh, nothing crazy. But I also, besides theater, my background is in um, singing and music. So I have an understanding of this area uh, just by the experience of doing that, but not no other like actual experience. So let me ask you a question. So have you ever bought a whiskey um, based on that you were impressed by a rep? Well, you know what? I think I'm going to try that. I'm going to buy a bottle of that. Have you ever been found yourself wanting to buy something because a rep did such a good job that you wanted to buy something? Probably not. I'm not an easy sales pitch. I usually have to taste it myself to make any actual assumptions. And I will listen to what they're saying, but it's almost kind of like adding just input until I taste it. All right. So I'm asking everybody in the chat, have you ever bought, and be honest, have you ever bought something or maybe you were on the fence and you said, you know what? I really like the presentation. I'm really curious. I think I'm going to buy a bottle. Of course, it also helps that they're giving you free samples, and then you taste it, you like it, and you buy it. Never. Hurts. But yeah, but any in the chat, put in there yes or no. But have ever bought a bottle or joined perhaps a whiskey club based on uh, or in response to or due to uh, a whiskey rep? I'm sure Ben Dietrich, Scotch Malt Whiskey Society, is very successful. At what he does, I'm sure a lot of people join the SMWS because of uh, Ben Dietrich. He does an excellent job. He's a real person. He's one of us. When, you, when, when I see him on a, on a channel, he's one of us talking about SMWS and he just so happens to be working for him. That's the way I feel with Ben. You know what I'm talking about in terms of Ben? Uh, I think I recognize the name, but I don't know exactly who it is. He's a handsome young man with a full head of hair. Like very us, tall. of course. He's very tall. Without the hair. <laughs> he's, very, he's, he's tall. He's been on Scotch Test Dummies. He's been on Scotch Four Dummies. Um, he's been on, he's probably been on with these guys at least a couple of times. I, I, he was on Ear Whiskey re recently. I think, I think he's, 
I mean, I'm totally putting butter on his bread. And I'm not a member of the SMWS only because I'm exploring individual distilleries. And if I could buy SMWS off the shelf, you know, go to a local whiskey shop or just order stuff without being a, a member, I, prob- I, mean, I don't know if I can or not. I probably would. But I'm much more in terms of my journey and learning about whiskeys. I'm really much more about learning about the individual distilleries their core range and then their special bottles than I am independent. See, I've no, I haven't done that much with independent bottles either. Uh, I'm done, not that not good. And it's, and SMWS is an independent bottler uh, as well as a club and everything else. Um, but at this stage of my journey, what I'm studying and learning, getting into independent bottlers has been a low priority. And so that's the reason. Why. Other than that, all the SMWS bottles I've tasted, I've really, really liked. Um, so anyway, um, let's see. Someone said I was getting off topic. Dude, when you're 53 years old, you're allowed to ramble because that's what we do. Um, someone's okay. Dram Bam Thank you, Man said rarely, but yes, Widemeyer, uh, local. Uh, Ross of Trap says no. Um, SoCal Dram Tramp says Dan from Glen, oh, Glen Morangy is pretty convincing. Yeah, so Dan is really, really, really good. I like him. I've seen him on the Scotch for Dummies. Uh, I like him a lot. Um, the rep could be a, t- uh, Chad Adams says the rep could be a total douche. And if the juice is good, I'm buying, <laughs> but why would you be buying a douche? I-, I don't get that. Um, I've never had a douche rep on. I don't want a douche rep on mass and gill full fresh and clean. Uh, <laughs> JG says yes. Yellowstone. Um, Man, I get off, I get marginally off topic. Someone gets on my case. Give me a break. Uh, Sorry, so, no. You can't please everyone. No, can't please everyone. Um, I've stayed much more. See, this has been much more of a lecture. I don't like. I like being much more dialoguing and and I, I like and so forth. You know, but this is something that's been on my mind a lot. Um, and I'm hoping that whiskey reps will watch this. I'm most hoping fellow whiskey tubers will watch this. And you know, think twice. You know, maybe even, so if I was going to have a whiskey rep on, okay, say I was going to have a whiskey rep on from Glenn Schmuckatelli, right? Have you ever had a Glenn Schmuckatelli? It's a fine brand, I hear. Yeah, yeah, I, absolutely. You should try the cast drink. Uh, it's awesome. Oh, I love cast drink. <laughs> so I would say, it's his name. We're already selling it. We don't even know it. No one's <laughs> ever going to find it. <laughs> so I say we're, I'm going to have Barney, some guy named Barney on from Glenn Schmuckatelli. I say, hey, so this is how the channel goes, and people like to ask questions. And if you dodge questions, it's kind of turn them off. Um, these are the typical kind of questions they're going to want to ask. Um, does does your boss have any problem about you talking about more than just your brand and be able to mention? And the, if they said no, if they said no, I can only do this and this and this and this. And do you have a script? Is the question? Yeah, yeah essentially. Then I personally would not have them on. I would not have them on. Um, I know some of the editing, Edward, editing, editing. I have another drink. That stuff's stronger than it looks. Yes. <laughs> the, the the company that owns Highland Park and McAllen. I used to say McCollin, and now I say McAllen. So I got educated. Uh, they, t- I know they tend to be a little more restrictive on the reps, and I know that. Uh, I know that because one of the reps who's no longer working for him, working for somebody else, told me. Uh, that was one of the reasons why he left. Yeah, I can understand why someone would because I don't understand why you'd want someone who's enthusiastic about something to be put in a case. And that's it. It's like right. you can do everything in here but nothing else, even right. if you're enthusiastic about other products. It, it doesn't make sense in the whiskey world. So Donald Rand says, Glenn Schmuckatelli cast strength, aged in both my entire cast. <laughs> Didn't know they had those anymore. <laughs> uh, <laughs> if not peated was stinky, you should try a bovine diarrhea cast. I mean, there are some people who would probably make the comparison very easily. So. <laughs> I would not. I just know some people would. Hey, is this Lefroy? No, it's Glenn Schmuckadilly. <laughs> yes, bovine cast strength. It's a rarity. But uh, I got to finish this one, and then I'm going to work on this Barrera over here. Mm-hmm. Did you want to talk at all about... Um, I don't know his name, but I've seen his things blipping up about a gentleman who passed away very recently who worked for Four Roses. You might know more oh. about him. 
Because he sounded like the kind of brand rep type person who was, you know, engaging and interesting and honest and open. But I don't know anything about him. I just heard it. I'm like, oh, that sounds No. Bad. So, um, so I have a friend that I've actually known for um, 10 years or so. He works for a major company. I'd love to have him on. I, I, I haven't talked to him about it. He works for a, he works for a major a major brand. Known him for about 10 years. And I met him through... I was actually doing some background work for 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 a show. I was providing photography and background for a show, and he was a coach for the show. And he also was working for uh, um, uh, a major brand. I, I I probably will be running into him in the near future, but I'm gonna see if I can bring him on. I'd love to bring him on if he's allowed to. Uh, come on, the Bur area. All right, now I'm gonna get over to the Bur area real quick. Uh, the Bur area. I mentioned this earlier, but in case you weren't watching, this began whiskey. Uh, the whiskey began as 100% Golden Promise malted barley and matured in both new and used barrels, finished in Oloroso and P PX sherry gas. Uh, and they put this out as a part of their 10th anniversary. Bottled at, this is another, and be another Wowser, 62.9% alcohol by volume. It's good stuff. Puts What do they say? Puts hair in your chest, that kind of thing. It's good for you. It's been, wake you up. <laughs> it's been up for a while. So, I mean, classic sherry notes, fig, dates, raisins, a little bit of a, a nuttiness to it, prunes, really, really nice. Slange. Cheers. Woo. I was just about to pour something else. Mm. I don't know what yet. Oh, I know. I, mean, I just got to be in the moment. You know these guys. You've heard of them. Oh, yeah, yeah, Eleanor. Ooh, I don't even remember which one. This wow. Is. Wow. If I had to pick which one I liked more, it would be really, really difficult. But I'm at this moment, I am leaning on towards – I'm going to show you the bottle – Balconis is in Waco, Wack or Wacko. Wacko, Wacko. Wake, <laughs> Wacko, Texas. For those who remember the uh, Branch Davidians, uh, that's where the Branch Davidians were at, uh, who got uh, murdered by um, who was the Attorney General? Um, what, what was that bitch's name? Um, I know very little about that area in general. So. I, can't remember, I can't remember her name. Anyway. Uh, the, you know, the U.S. government murdered uh, all these. Uh, yes, they had a wacko religion, but the U.S. government murdered these people. Uh, uh, they do that sometimes. Yes, that killed them all, uh, murdered them all. Um, and the thing is, is there were organizations who had research on the. I'm not going to talk about the branch of videos, but I'll say that for another time. Anyway, whack, whack, Waco, Texas. Waco, Waco, Texas. That's where they're located. Man, it's so easy for me to just go. Way off topic. That's right. Uh, uh, Matt at Ear Whiskey he loves having me on because man, we just go all over the map. And then oh, we yeah. start talking about aliens from outer space and ancient. Yeah, movies. that's all it takes. I can start talking about Star Trek or whiskey or music or PC games. It's just Janet Reno. That that was her name. That was her name, Janet Reno. Oh. Yeah, never held accountable. The administration was never held accountable. I mean, that that was some real bullshit. Yes. You, okay, just because someone's wacko has some wacko beliefs and wacko practices. They could have the guy. They could have the guy who was the leader of the group. He would go to town. They weren't held up there, you know, cloistered. They would go to town. They could have when he went to town, went and picked him up. You know, no tanks, no flamethrowers, no cannons, no guns, no or you know, just as you would anybody else, in, as a normal, you know, grab him. Someone needs needs to you know be brought in question, whatever. Right? If you got a warrant for him. But bringing in like a, 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 a quasi military group to uh, um, invade, that was some bullshit. All right. Sorry. No, it usually doesn't end well. It's like, no. it's like, and they're over there. We're over here. Let's go bother them. Oh. Anyway, <laughs> now, now that, now that, now that Bacones is in Waco, hopefully they have that Waco can have another. Um, See, the unfortunate thing about uh, American history is there's always the bad parts. <laughs> it's just how it is. It's, that, it's like that over the world. Wow. I mean, I'm just loving it. I'm just loving it. So. Oh, this is chapter seven, if you were curious. Okay. 
I don't remember what chapter seven is. I just remember that's one of the two bottles I got when I went there. It, yeah, that's the one that falls um, chapter six. You're right. I think it's right before chapter eight, too. Absolutely. Absolutely. That's where it goes. All right, I'm going to put a little bit of water in here. So uh, I wish your brother was here. We could, we could ask him. So how did he – do you know, happen to know how he got into being a rep? Uh, from what I understand it, and, you know, just from him being my younger brother, he got interested in wine – a long time ago, I don't remember the exact catalyst, but he, he got interested. Uh, he started to study being a wine psalm. I think he's only level one, whatever that means. And then he worked at a vineyard for a while. There's a local vineyard called Newport Vineyards. Um, lovely place, honestly. I really like going there. But uh, he worked there for a while. He worked at a nearby liquor store that I still go to for a year after they just opened. So he was there for opening until he left a year later because there is – and he, they, they made promises and didn't keep them, is the best way to put it. Right. Uh, and he got picked up by this rather large uh, dis distribution group in this area um, for Rhode Island, which is you know, a tiny state. But uh, he can distribute. Um, he distributes to restaurants and liquor stores and that kind of thing. So that's become his thing. But it's also kind of his shtick, which I don't like. <laughs> and I've even helped him kind of accidentally just by circumstantial stuff. Like if I go to a restaurant, I will sit at the bar and I'll talk to the bartender about whiskey because right. whiskey, <laughs> right. no good, no reason why. Just like, oh, what's that? I've never heard of that before. Could I have a sample of that? Or, you know, right. well, not sample, but a pour. And uh, oftentimes they'll give me a free sample of something else just because I ask right. uh, enough questions. They, no they notice that I'm curious and right. uh, they, they want to, um, they start getting curious too. You know, it's a weird thing. Right. But, uh, we sometimes I go to a restaurant. I'll talk to the bartender. My brother actually showed up at one restaurant once, and uh, we didn't know it at the time. But the guy I was talking to, who I just knew as the bartender, um, ended up being someone he wanted to talk to about a different restaurant that is opening up somewhere else. And we were just you know shooting the shit, chit chatting. And my brother was curious to talk to someone in charge about stuff. And just because of that little dialogue, like it wasn't a push. It was just. I was there for food. My brother showed up to have food with me. We started talking with the bartender. Uh, he was able to get in contact with this guy who we neither of us knew was in charge of this other place. So it was all very circumstantial. And it, it's kind of like the way I think whiskey should work, like making connections almost naturally. So Donald Rant says, the worst brand rep I've ever come across worked for a very large distillery. It was sad. I knew more than the rep. And any serious question was deflected with the skill of a politician in uh -huh. parliament. Yeah, so, you know, reps, really good reps need to not only have good communication skills, good personal skills, they got to be knowledgeable about the brand they're representing, representative, that's all, folks. They should know, they should know, because you might get asked questions, you get a nerd like me asking production questions. You know, they should know. Do you know the mash bill? I always love to throw that at them just to see yeah. what happens. Um, they should know something about the production. They should know the history. You know, there's a lot there to learn. And really good distilleries, say if they have American reps, should, within the first year that that person is working for them, should fly them from the U.S. to Scotland or Ireland or wherever the distillery is and give them a week studying and learning at the distillery so they can go back to the United States or Canada, wherever they're being a rep, and be more informed. And if you go there, you're going to be a lot more enthusiastic. You're going to fall in love with the place, having been there. Uh, and you come across more authentic if you've actually been there. There's been times where I've talked to asked a rep, so have you ever been to whatever the distillery was? And, and it was in Scotland. And they're like, oh, no, one of these days I'd like to get there. I'm like, freaking A, dude. How long have you been working for them? Oh, about two and a half years. You're kidding me. You're working for this distiller in Scotland. And they haven't flown you out there and give you a week there, at least a week, to learn about the place, to do a tour. And, you know, a whiskey rep working in California should spend a week at the distillery learning production and even maybe be a tour guide for a week. So you can, because tour guides got to know the production because they're going to, this is this and this is that and this is this and this is that. You got to be able to do that. And it just blows my mind. Uh, the lack of it, and these people are, are, are already underpaid. Um, yes, they they are. don't properly train. You know, and the one thing I can say about, so people in the wine industry, um, in the Napa Valley, 
you're going to find the most educated hosts or people working out in the tasting rooms. Um, then you will, if you go up to Sierra Foothills, you know, they're small mom and pop wineries. They got to find somebody local, someone who lives there that's, you know, they're going to pay them $8 an hour or something. Um, the college time, kids mostly. Yeah. <laughs> or that or people are retired. People are oh, retired. Yeah, that too. Yeah. Pop. You know, they spent, you know, 30 years as a, you know, as an engineer and they like wine. So, hey, they'll do a part-time thing at a winery, you know. So they're just there to do this, you know, just mm -hmm. pour. They don't really know much, but they're just there to pour and be friendly. Um, you know, got to give them that. <coughs> but um, um, so you're not going to find them as well-educated and knowledgeable. Um, and because if you do have a lot of education, if you have taken a lot of exams, if you have got certifications and so forth, uh, you're worth a lot more money um, or should be paid on because you're a lot more knowledgeable. But here's the, rea here's the reality, and I hate to say this. So I know a ton about wine and a ton about whiskey. But if you get an attractive woman, blonde-haired, 21-year-old, <laughs> blonde, attractive woman, and if she's got some kazungas, she will outsell me in a heartbeat. Yes. She will sell more wine than I ever will because for the most part, the average visitor to a winery or to a distillery is not asking a lot of textbook questions. No, there's also the fact that it's male dominated and that they're not looking for knowledge. They're looking to be uh, entertained in some kind of odd yeah. fashion. They're looking to have a good time out in the wine country or at a distillery. And so someone is really, really attractive. Someone's pretty. Not that I'm not pretty. You know, I, I got something going on. <laughs> you got the Captain Picard thing going with a little bit of the Riker. It's good. Yeah. A little beer and the bald head. It's good. <laughs> no, it's more like a, 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 a Uncle Fester with a beard. Anyway, so anyway. Uh, I got that yeah, mental image. That's, right. that's just reality. You can't get upset. Hey, just that's just that's just the way it is, you know. So anyhow. They've done their marketing, unfortunately. So are you enjoying the uh, – Oh, I love this stuff. I have to be very careful uh, because I want to drink it much faster than I should, and I don't know when I'm going to get back to Texas again for another bottle. Mm. Sometime next year, maybe, but woof. Have you seen Balconas in your neighborhood? Definitely not in my neighborhood. Rhode Island is very an odd place because it's so tiny, right? and unlike other states, it didn't get, I don't want to call it invaded by Total Wine, but Total Wine is kind of everywhere. But right. I can't have – there's no total wine in Rhode Island. There's one in Massachusetts that I can go to an right. hour away. But there are – there's a small um, – there are many smaller liquor stores that branched out and became little, you know, mom-and-pop shops that got bigger and, and successful. Those things are scattered about this area more than they are. So nothing nearby where I could get something that was, you know, from Texas. I've mentioned Texas, Texas whiskeys at many of these places saying, look, you got to try to get this stuff. Right. And I have seen a few – bottles popping up nearby which is good i think it was iron root and maybe it was balconis or maybe it was um there's another one i forget the name though there's at least two or three i've seen part of garrison brothers is out there so yeah, that's one right garrison guy, brothers but one last guy says he's not a fan of the balconis baby blue that's completely understandable and i would not judge the distillery based on that was their first whiskey and i wouldn't judge on that one so if you have about if you have that one and you think oh i don't like balconis you need to try a lot of the other other whiskeys, particularly the sing, this nice single malts. Uh, I think I tried the baby blue when I was in the vault. Um, it's with, uh, with a gentleman named Zach, I believe his name was. Uh, um, there's some people who really like it. Some people really don't. I know, had far um, too many whiskeys in that room, so I I'm sure I loved all of it. I felt really great when I was there. Right, right. It's hard not to feel good when you're in the vault. I think. So anyhow, hey, so we've been on for about an hour and fifteen minutes. I'm gonna wrap this up. Um, any final thoughts? So the next time you see a rep, realize if they're following a the script, it's not because they want to, it's because they have to. Yeah. Um, the, and you know, they're trying to do their job. They're trying to do it, uh, um, uh, do justice to the company. They're trying to, uh, they got to pay their bills. If they speak well, if they're knowledgeable about their brand, if yeah, it's an infomercial, if they're on some YouTube channel, you know, whiskey tuber channel on there, it's an infomercial. They're walking that tightrope. Yeah, just yeah, that's just the way it is. Uh, no sense in bitching, mind going. Just that's the way it is. When you see a whiskey rep who is being themselves and can talk about their love of whiskey and represent the brand that they work for, 
uh, count that as a bonus. And they're really knowledgeable and interactive and engaging. Count that as a bonus. Those are the guys uh, that you really want to like. So I, I'm going to say uh, cheers off to sommeliers who work their asses off in the holidays. And I'm say cheers to the reps uh, who are do I think a good job in being part of the whiskey community um, and you know and, and doing it right. So cheers off to them. They're hardworking people, and I appreciate the information that they do provide. You know, I can enjoy a whiskey infomercial. Yeah, I have no problem with people telling me more about whiskey. Not surprising. <laughs> yeah, I can enjoy. I can just just acknowledge this is a whiskey infomercial, and don't let it bother you. This is yeah. a whiskey, and that's what it, that's what it is, and that's it. You know, just accept it as, as it is. All right. Uh, I want to thank everyone for tuning in, for watching. And let's see. Oh, by the way, I have a special video at a uh, post tomorrow. It's called Ardbeg, the Ultimate Dram. Oh, boy. It'll post tomorrow. It'll post tomorrow. Um, and see, my next video will be oh, New Year's Day. New Year's Day will be my top, uh, top 10 for 2019. Top okay. 10 for 2019. I haven't yet planned what I want to do for New Year's Eve. I might get together with some Somalia friends. We might do champagne and wine, rather, than, or I might be on here. I don't know. I haven't decided yet. So, alrighty, uh, cheers and have a good night. Sanchez, thanks for having me again. Yep. Have a good night. Hang in there. Mm -hmm.